may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this morning comes from, to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, starting with the fifth verse. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water, that sends out its roots by the stream, and does not fear when heat comes. For its leaves remain green, and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading for this morning comes to us from the book of 1st Corinthians, chapter 15, starting with the 12th verse. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection from, of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we hope, have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. And he lifted up his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For, behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. This is the Gospel of our Lord. At this time, I'd like to invite the 
Baptist congregation to join in the fellowship registration. You'll find that slip in your worship bulletin. How do we fill that out? And place it in, in the offering plate as you leave today. And the children, I invite the children to come forward at this time. Good morning. It's great to see you today. You know, have you ever had a bad day? Well, bad days come every once in a while. Uh, <coughs> can you ever imagine getting up late? Have you ever gotten laid up, late, getting up late before? Okay, some have. All right. Um, have you ever tried to go have breakfast, but there's no milk? Okay, that can happen sometimes. That's not a good day to, to do. Or when you go to school, you forget you're supposed to bring your lunch and you forgot your lunch and you don't have a lunch, that's getting pretty bad. And then just imagine, just imagine that 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 your friends are all unfriendly for some reason. Now, if all those things happened in the same day, I would say you're having a bad day, right? Well, Jesus recognizes that some of us have bad days. And you know what he wants to say? He says, even though you're going to have bad days and they will come, guess what? He is going to be with you. That's right. God is going to be with you. Because even if things don't go right, guess what? God is still your friend. God is still your Savior. And, and I tell you what, Knowing that God is with us all the time is a really good thing. And there are many people who are having bad days, but they do not know about Jesus. So we can be their friends. And when you see somebody having a bad day, guess what? You can be their friend. And you can care for them and you can help them. We don't know why people have bad days. You know, people have different reasons. But I tell you what, we have Jesus, and as long as we can show God's love to other people, we'll show them God's love. And that's, a, that's something that's going to help everybody have a better day. Okay? Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for loving us. You are awesome. We thank you for coming to us in our good days, but we also thank you for being alongside of us when our days don't go so good. Help us to remember that uh, you are with us all the time. And Lord, we, we pray that you would uh, be with us in a special way so that, so that we can be friends to others all the time. Amen. Thank you for coming up. In the Gospel of Luke, we heard um, Pastor Reed. And he lifted up his eyes on the disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and spurn you as your name as evil, and the count of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. Please rise and let's sing. And the, all the people said, Amen.
grace, peace, and mercy from God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus the Christ of God, the Holy Spirit. One of my all-time favorite uh, television sitcoms was a series called MASH that was about uh, many years ago. It was a sitcom about a, a time during the Korean conflict. And in their early episodes, uh, there was a few characters, Frank Burns and Hot Lips. They were a couple who are often in strife and conflict with uh, Hawkeye and Trapper John. In one such episode, Frank and Hot Lips had been trying to do in uh, Hawkeye, but failed, and Hawkeye had the upper hand, and Radar said to him, Why don't you try to do back to them what they've been doing to you? And Hawkeye, having some wisdom, he said, Look at them. Each of them are just one half of a person. And together, when they come together, they barely make a whole person. They have enough troubles of their own. When I was pastoring in another state, I became friends with a pastor of a different denomination. I admired him very much. He had great godly insight, and, and we were friends. A few years passed, and then I became very disillusioned. This man of God, who I held so high in my esteem, turned out to have a hidden sin in his life. And it turned out that he hurt a great number of people. Half people. In our text from the Gospel of Luke today, Jesus is talking about people who are living half a life. A half of a life when you compare them to other people. Jesus is talking about people who don't get life, people who have either too little or people who have too much. Either way, it's a half life. And before we begin with our gospel, which did begin at verse 12, we see a few verses earlier that Jesus is there on a mountain and he's praying. And why is he praying? He's praying that he can have the mind and the will of his heavenly father. And we're told here in the gospel of Luke that, that Jesus chooses his disciples and decides to come down from that mountain to be what we hear on the plain, on the coast. And our setting is right on the, on the coast of, of Israel, in near the cities of Tyre and Sidon. And so after being up on that mountain, he was teaching, he was preaching, he was healing. And the crowds were coming in around him, and Jesus stopped and then he began with kind of what you may have heard from before in the Gospel of Matthew, in that what we call the Beatitudes. But these are slightly different. Slightly different. And he says, blessed are you who hunger. Blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who cry. Blessed are you when people exclude you, and blessed are you when people reject you. We guess that people, when they heard this message, probably felt comforted, probably felt encouraged. But then Jesus continued, and here's what he said. Woe to those who are rich. Woe to those who are fed well. Woe to those who laugh. Woe to those whom everyone speaks well of. I imagine each of them kind of looked at each other and said, what in the world is he up to? He's turning the whole world upside down. 
we might ask ourselves the very same thing. What does Jesus mean? Hearing Jesus talk about these woes makes me feel uncomfortable. I feel uneasy because what I hear might mean that I might have to change my life. Does it mean that God loves poor people, but he hates rich people? No, that is not the God that we know, because we know that God loves everyone. But Jesus is saying that if our lives are centered around pleasing ourselves, we're going to have a half-life. If we only go after possessions, and if we only go, in, go and expend our energy in gathering all kinds of resources around ourselves for taking care of ourselves, that is only a half-life. But was in what Jesus is also saying, that if this is our orientation, if this is our goal, then guess what? We will already have our reward. And that's the scary part. Because if all you're seeking is material wealth and, and accumulation of trinkets and, and good things in this world, this is your reward. What he doesn't say is that what happens in the next world. The word reward here means paid in full. And this stops us to consider that as good as things are here in the U.S. of A, we can have all kinds of material goods. We may not see ourselves as those who are hungry, those who are in need of clothing. But we could also be very much in danger of being spiritually poor very far away from God. You know, there's some churches out there, it's, ours is not one of them, that say that if you have material wealth, that's a sign that God blesses you. And if you turn that around, that if you don't have material wealth, well then God is not blessing you. Well friends, that's not just the way it works. There's a half of a truth there, and the half-truth is that God does bless us, everyone, and he blesses us abundantly, and we thank him. And we thank him for all those things material and for those things spiritual. But there's a warning that comes with material wealth. God blesses us that we can be a blessing to others. Be careful. Because your wealth cannot save you. And your wealth can isolate you and not allow you to become sensitive to the needs of people that God has placed around you. If you go further in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 12, verse 48, Jesus says this, To whom much is given, much is required. God has blessed us with a lot, hasn't he? And as he has blessed us, God is using us. And God is allowing us to be that, that light for him in this world, to shine with God's goodness, to help those who stand in need for those people who are poor, for those people who lack clothing. You and I are channels of God's blessings. And that really is the purpose of the church. You know, it's difficult to navigate life and lose track of what's important because in making a living, we can sometimes slip into that idea that this is really what it's all about. And we get into that routine of making our daily bread, making our daily bread, making our daily bread, and then we might just forget the giver of that daily bread. Because each morsel of daily bread that we receive is given 
by God. And God loves all people. And Jesus is sending a message to all who are poor as well. He is saying, not what Matthew says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. No, Jesus is not talking about being poor in spirit here. He's talking about materially poor. Those who live in poverty, those who don't have enough to eat. <laughs> it's interesting and important, I think, for us to know that Jesus was poor. And it was actually God's will that he was a poor person. Paul says that Jesus emptied himself of all riches when he came to this world so that he might offer us the richness of, of God's love and forgiveness. Think about that. When Jesus, the Son of God, was in heaven, he had everything, but he downgraded tremendously when he came to earth. He became poor, and he did it so that he might offer us the richness of God's grace and forgiveness. And as blessed people, as people claimed by God, we can become whole through the blood of Jesus Christ because we are forgiven, we are saved. And by faith, we can live not a half life, but a full life. A full life that comes when we have Christ as our Lord and our Savior because he opens our eyes to the true blessings of God's love, to know who we are, that we are loved by God, and that we can be those people to love and care for one another. We can be blessings. We can help the poor. We can feed the hungry. We can stand up and we can advocate for those who are treated unjustly in this world. And something more. We can follow the one who went to the cross and rose again and tell one another not to look only for that food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. No longer half people, but a whole people redeemed by God. Please join me in a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, help me to bless those around me. Help me to respond to the material needs that people have in this world. Remind me not to work only for that bread that will spoil, but for the true riches that are always found in you. Help me to share the goodness of your name, that others may come to know the full night, the full life that comes only in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus today and always. Amen.
Let us rise and confess our Christian faith. Together, share it in the Apostles' Creed, page 10 in our bulletins. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again and grew in heaven. He ascended into heaven and sits down. By grace, come to salvation through your Son. Savior Jesus, Lord, in your mercy. Grant, O Lord, that your people may always hold fast to the word that has been preached to them and not believe it in vain, Lord, in your mercy. Preserve the family and all godly Christian homes. Give parents diligence and persistence in their duties to teach the faith in word and in example. Keep all children in the promise you have made to them in their baptism. Let the patience, kindness, and endurance of Christian love have no end among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, do not let our blessings consist in the treasures of goods in this world alone. Give us joy in every sorrow, knowing that if we have you, we lack nothing and will receive an eternal reward in Christ, which will never fail. Lord, in your mercy, be near those who are troubled by any unclean spirit, memories or thoughts, and to the sick and all who are in need of your healing. Especially we have lift up before you, George, Jacob, Ronnie, Cassandra, Chuck, Keith, John, Sandy, Sharon, Ed, Jim, Doug, Amy, Pat, and Steve. Lord, in your mercy, bless Trinity, who will come before your altar today to receive her first communion. May your body and blood strengthen her faith and unite her in the one true faith that endures forever. May we all come before you today with lives of thanksgiving for your precious body and life-giving blood. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust all these petitions to your care, loving Father, confident in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, who is worshipped together with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, In the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. 
Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all honor and glory and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. At this time, I'd like to call Trinity and her family to come forward to receive their first communion to be followed by the uh, musicians. And then we'll be communing uh, this side of the congregation and this side. Please enter by the center aisles and return to this side.
life everlasting. Amen. Let's rise and begin with our, uh, let's uh, conclude with our last. 